Hey, Bass Geek here. Me, Debo's Fishing, and Tackle Junkie 81 are going to give you five of the best baits for fall bass. So I went out and I bugged these two guys to death until they agreed to be on my channel. And the biggest reason why I've done it is because guys, you see what I fish. I don't fish lakes that are like everybody's lakes. These guys don't fish lakes that are like everybody's lakes. So this gives us a little more diversity for the fall. And maybe gives you some baits that you can go out and fish in areas that are more like the lakes you fish and less like the lakes I fish. So we're going to start out with one of my best buds on the YouTubeage, Mr. Tackle Junkie 81. I'm sure you already know him, but we're going to let him talk to you about one of his favorite baits for big fall bass. Bass Geek followers, fans, and friends, I'm Tackle Junkie 81. Big shout out to Hank for having me on the channel. It'd be awesome if you guys would check out my channel as well. Now today we're going to talk about my go-to bait for fall bass fishing. Now if you guys are familiar at all with my channel, you'll know a square bill is a bait that I have tied on all year long. Okay, but it really, really does shine in the fall. Now Hank, you probably don't see him use a square bill too often. He's fishing, you know, deeper, clear lakes. I'm fishing shallow, stained to muddy water. So again, a square bill is a big player for me. You know, in the fall, the bass are very active. They're on shad, feeding up heavy because they know winter is right around the corner. A square bill is a great bait to cover water quickly and find those fish. Okay, now if you don't have shad in your lakes, let's say you're fishing a pond or you just don't have shad in your lakes, you can just throw whatever color imitates what they're feeding on, whether it be bluegill, crawfish, like I said, shad, whatever. It's really hard to go wrong with that shad type color. It does imitate, you know, really any bait fish. But again, just use whatever color is going to work for you. Now we do have shad in our lakes, but if the water stains up pretty good or really gets muddy, I'll use chartreuse blackback, you know, red cross, another good one. Again, the gizzard shad are some of my go-to colors. But again, you really don't have to throw the right color to imitate whatever it is they're feeding on. You need to throw really what shows up well in this type of water color. So again, they may be feeding on bluegill or whatever, but some of those natural bluegill colors blend in with this watercolor. So again, I'm gonna throw maybe the red craw or the chartreuse blackback. Again, you wanna match the hatch when you can, but you also need to make sure your bait is visible to the fish. As far as what gear I throw my crankbaits on, it's a seven foot medium heavy mod fast action rod. So medium heavy power with a slower tip. That slower tip's going to do a couple things for you. It acts like a delay. So it's gonna allow the bass to get the bait a little bit better but it's also gonna help you fight the fish a little bit better as well. The slower tip is great for fighting fish with treble hooks so that they can throw those really easy. Again, that softer tip keeps them pinned up. I like a six speed reel, six three, six four, six six, something in the six range, usually 15 pound Invisex, you know, Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon is what I like the most. Now, if I'm trying to keep my baits up extra shallow, I may throw a 20 pound test mono. So again, you can use your rod or you can use your pound test to really adjust the depth that you're trying to achieve. Typically with a square bill, I'm going to target stumps, lay downs, or rock. You know, if I have an area that's got some stumps, I'm just going to fan cast until I come across, you know, those stumps. Lay downs, usually you can see, and I'll bring my bait right along the lay down. Now the key with a square bill, or really any crankbait, is deflection. Deflection is key to getting bit. So if you do have stumps, lay downs, or rock, make sure your bait is hitting whatever it is that you're fishing around. You, get, you gotta hit that cover to get that reaction bite out of the bass. Okay, today we're fishing some rock. Now I'm sure you guys can see this weed line here, but the rock is right below the water and it kind of tapers out. Okay, here's how I fish the rock with a square bill. I'll make a cast. Okay, I keep my rod tip up. I can feel myself hitting the rock. Okay, as the rock tapers down, I'm going to lower my rod tip, you know, for that depth control, the way I'm always hitting bottom or hitting that rock. Again, deflection is key. You can also see how I'm paralleling the bank. 
Okay, you're trying to keep your bait in the strike zone for as long as possible. You don't know which way the bass are faced on the bank, okay, or where they're at. So to be in the strike zone the entire time, parallel that rock. Again, I got my rod tip up. I'm coming off that rock. I'm going to lower my rod tip just to make sure that I'm still on that rock deflecting on the bottom. Well, not really the size we're after today, but hey, a fish is a fish. Kind of looks like one of those Debo dinks. All right, square bill, small bass. But guys, it's really that easy. Again, deflection is key when you're fishing a square bill. Parallel those banks, look for your wood, your laydowns, your stumps and hopefully you guys can catch a few more fish. Hey, I want to give a big shout out to Tackle Junkie 81. I can't say thanks enough for coming on and doing that spot for me. Guys, make sure you go check out Tackle Junkie 81. I know you all probably already know about him, but he has got some really in-depth, uh, you know, videos on baits, how to clean reels, uh, hooks. I mean, the guy really, really studies and thinks about the things that he uses and how he uses them. Make sure you go out there and uh, sub to Mr. Tackle Junkie and he's a very good friend of mine and this channel. Now, the other guy, I could say the same thing about. Debo is an awesome dude. He is an awesome dude. I've got to talk to him two or three times and he is as cool in person as he is in front of the camera. Debo's Fishing Guys is gonna share with you the next bait that's gonna catch you some big fall bass. Good evening, fishing friends, or should I say bass geeks. My name is Devin from Debo's Fishing and I am extremely excited that Hank invited me on his channel to talk about one of my favorite fall lures. That's the lipless crankbait. I fish them almost like a, a cross between a swim jig and a square bill. But we'll get more into that later. First, let's take a look at the actual lipless crankbaits that I use. Now, all right, I keep my lipless crankbait selection pretty simple when I'm fishing shallow water. The first type I use is this. This is the Cotton Cordell Super Spot. You can get these super cheap at Walmart, buck 99, sometimes the bin, 299, whatever. They're very affordable, they don't break the bank. I go with two sizes in all of these, either the smaller quarter ounce here or the larger half ounce. You can see there the difference. I try to match it to the size of the bait that the fish are feeding on. So if I can find some dead shad, I try to match it to either the smaller size or a little bit bigger. Now, one thing, if you're a bank angler, if you're fishing the larger half ounce and you notice that it keeps digging down, you keep getting it stuck in the rocks, it's just a headache, you're losing lures, try just bumping down to that quarter ounce. It's smaller, it's a little bit lighter, it's easier to keep up in the water column so you're not digging all the way clear down in the rocks and getting stuck. Now the second type of lipless crankbait that I use is this. This is the Strike King Red Eye Shad. You can go with you know something a little bit more realistic looking like this. You can go with that sexy shad color. If you have bluegill in your lake, you can go with more of a bluegill color. I keep those simples pretty much the same. You know, a white natural color like this when I'm fishing, you know, when it's kind of overcast or the days where it's not a ton of sun, and if it's dirty water, I will go with this guy here just to add a little bit of color to it. So that bright, you know, that sexy shad color, that bright chartreuse and yellow kind of helps stick through that muddy water. Now, if there's not as much cloud cover, the clouds are gone, it's more of a sunny day, I go to something with some reflection. So a chrome color like this, this is like a chrome sexy shad kind of mixed together. But the key is for that sun like that, when it's going through, those fish are just seeing a flash and that's what I want them to key in on. So if the water's pretty clear, you know, more visible, I'll go with the chrome color. If it's a dirtier stain, you know, even closer to that muddy watercolor, uh, I'll go with a gold chrome or a gold reflective color. I feel like it shows up a little bit better in that dirtier water. Now, one thing I really want to do stress with both the Cotton Cordell, the Super Spots, and the Strike King Red Eye Shad, I urge you highly to change out the treble hooks. I mean, you can pick whatever brand you like. Uh, I've had really good luck with the Mustad Triple Grips uh, and just the regular Gamagatsu hooks. Uh, those are just the round bend. Now, the final kind of lipless crankbait I use is this. You've been seen one of these. These have been around for a long time. This is the rattle trap. And it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, these are kind of the standard for a long time. A lot of people even just refer to a lipless crankbait as a rattle trap, you know, the Bill Lewis rattle trap. These are great as well. You can find deals on these too if you keep an eye out. The nice thing about these is 
You can see there it already comes with the Mustad triple grip hooks on it. So if you hate changing trebles, you don't want to worry about that. Uh, the old rattle trap may be the way to go. Next, let's go take a look at the combos. So the first combo I use is something with, you know, more of a traditional crankbait feel to it. A softer rod, something that bends, you know, way more down the middle. It seems like that rod can almost bend all the way over if you wanted it to. A crankbait rod, really soft. Allows you to get that fish hooked and keep it pinned, you know. Slack line is what loses fish. So if you can keep that rod bent over and you can keep tension on that fish the whole time, that bendy rod really helps with those little treble hooks. I like this more bendy rod when I'm fishing more of an, an open water situation or if I'm fishing riprap where I'm, you know, just kind of taking the tops of rocks and bouncing it off. I like that softer crankbait rod. So the exact specs of this rod, this is a seven foot medium moderate, so a good soft bendy rod. Now the second combo I use, you can use these in open water if you want and around rocks, I did that last year, um, but I like this one for a little bit different reason. I really like this combo around shallow wood and grass, you know, especially in the fall with the nikes getting cooler, a lot of that vegetation in the lakes and ponds is going to start dying off. But you can use that to your advantage because if you can find any of those small isolated patches of grass, you know, good, green, healthy grass, there's a good chance that the fish are going to move out of that dead brown growth stuff into that green grass that's still oxygen rich, still good, still holding bait. So this combo is a little bit different. A medium or a medium heavy rod, um, something rated for lures about three quarter of an ounce. This is a medium fast. Now I've also got a medium heavy fast that I use for it, but something with a little quicker tip, a faster tip. There's not as much bend into it. It's a little stiffer rod when I'm fishing around wood and grass because when I'm bringing it over those stumps and I give it a quick pop, or if I get it stuck in the top of that grass and give it a quick pop to get it out of there, if I have a real soft crankbait rod like this, it feels like a noodle. It feels like I'm pulling a rubber band. With a faster rod like this, you get to that lure quicker and you can really pop it up out of there. Now real speed again is a personal preference. I say something into six to one or seven to one speed is the best. Um, on this one I have a six three to one. This is the Dial Fuego. And I like something a little slower when it starts to get colder. You're trying to run that crankbait just a little bit slower. I have a tendency to reel fast. So when it gets to that colder weather, I'll even drop down to a five, something where I can you know, still reel at a moderate pace, but keep that lure moving slow. So for this one, I was throwing my smaller quarter ounce lipless crankbaits on this. I use 12 pound fluorocarbon, um, 10 or 12 for the little quarter ounce uh, lipless does really well. Now on my little heavier cranking combo, I had 15 pound fluorocarbon on here. Now finally, a quick tip for fishing these lipless crankbaits. Like I said, I'm kind of fishing it like a swim jig. I'll throw it out and reel it in and you can have a lot of success that way. I've caught fish that way. But I found that if you can bounce it off rocks, kind of get it stuck in that grass, pop a free, anything that's going to kind of give it a weird erratic motion, I found that that can really draw those bites and that's what they call reaction strikes. So I hope this helps you all out. If you've never fished a lipless crankbait, tie one on and give it a try this fall. But that's enough for me. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks Debo. That man is super busy so I can't tell you and guys make sure you say thanks for him coming on and sharing that awesome information about one of his favorite baits and how he likes to fish it and rig it and that's also another bait these are two baits guys that to be honest i would never really put in my fall arsenal because i fish very very different lakes than they do so it's awesome that they took the time out of their busy days and lives to come on here and share some of their favorite baits make sure you go out and subscribe to debo he is cool 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 debo's fishing hit that subscribe button tell him you came over from bass geek if you don't already subscribe to him and i would say most of you already do because he just puts some cool content out on the youtube -age. all right so now i'm going to give you the final three and these are three baits that i love and can be fished about anywhere during the fall the very first thing, let's talk about the jig itself. Let's talk about the style that I like to go to. Now, if you're fishing around nothing but rock, you've really got nothing but rock, you know, a good football head is gonna be hard to beat. Go ahead, get that football head out there, drag it around, you're gonna be just fine. But if they're dropping that lake, you kinda wanna stay, you know, five, 10, 15 feet down. And if you're fishing the kind of the style of lakes that I fish, there's also a lot of wood. There's only one head for that sort of stuff. Rocking wood, you're gonna go with that arky head. Some people call it a flipping jig. It's also a great skipping style head. So if you're around docks, this is, as I've, if you guys have seen my jigs 101 video, 
this is uh, this is my four by four. This is the jig that I'm gonna throw 90% of the time. So now the colors of the jig, generally, I'm gonna keep that real simple, you know, as always. If you're in stained water, really, really muddy to stained water, you know, that black, black and blue with a black, black and blue trailer, that's gonna be what you're gonna to need to throw. Uh, stained to clear, you, you begin to have a little, you know, some options. Uh, my go-to's are going to be the black, brown, amber, and it's going to be the brown and the orange with a little bit of orange to it. On top of that, I may throw, because those bigger crawls, they can get this green, and when they molt, they'll have a little bit of that darker orange or red in them. So I may throw a watermelon red flake or some watermelon and put me a trailer uh, on there of red flake that's got a watermelon red flake in it so a good green with some red flake in there now as far as size goes when it comes to these jigs generally i'm bouncing back and forth between a 3 8 ounce and my go-to is the half ounce if i feel like they're a little finicky i'll move that 3 8 ounce if i got a little bit of wind you know it's that, that 3 8 ounce is going to be a slower fall if i've got a little bit of wind i'm going to jump up and i'm going to throw my half ounce my half ounce i believe has just got that good rate of fall good feel at a you know a multitude of different uh different depth levels also the other good thing is is with that arky style head i can really skip that half ounce if i've got a good beaver on there some sort of good uh, you know uh, flat beaver on there that I can make that bait wider and skip it even easier. So now let's talk about jig trailers. Now generally I'm going to match it green to a green so if I'm throwing a green jig I'm going to throw a watermelon trailer. Uh, two of my favorite trailers are going to be this trailer which is the Grunt by Bass Munitions. This is in uh, green pumpkin black flake and you can see it's got it's once you pull all these appendages apart it's going to have a little more action so a lot of times what i go with is this this is the moab by bass munitions and you know it's really great about you know it's a it's a big trailer you can cut it down generally i'll cut it down you know to about that but uh that really mimics those crayfish those crawdads really well it's got a nice subtle flutter action you know it's not got a lot of kick as it's falling rod reel and line setup generally if i'm flipping this and i'm going to be you know putting it around a lot of you know heavier cover i'm going with a seven foot six heavy fast action i've got a seven five to one now, i like to keep my you know flipping rods and reels and my pitching rods and reels uh my reels on that little lower speed because when you set the hook you've still got enough torque to get them out so i generally don't go above that seven five i don't have to pump my rod which is a great way when you get that rod tip up high you're pumping that rod that fish out of cover you get it at an 11 30 to 12 you're gonna snap that rod you're gonna snap it so you want to be able to torque them out so don't in my opinion don't go over that seven five to one when you're flipping heavy cover i'm going to for me again because you can see the sort of stuff that i'm flipping or around boat docks for me i'm going to put 20 pound fluorocarbon on here uh, I will go up to 25 pound if I'm around boat docks, a lot of man-made metal sharp sides, sharp, sharp objects, but I've never broke a fish off in wood with 20 pound test. Uh, like I said, if you're around grass, you want to go straight braid, any other time, 20 to 25 pound test. And uh, that's pretty much it on the flipping stuff. 90% of the time though, using the Arky style head, I'm fishing lighter wood around rocks kind of open not you know jagged or 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 rip wrap this these things get hung up so much in rip wrap it's it's insane there's a particular way to fish that we'll talk about that another day but generally i'm casting this here's the setup that i think you should use when you're just casting this around 
moderate to light cover rock and that sort of thing now unlike the reel on the other one this is an eight one to one and this is a lose lfs speed spool love these things it's got a nice you know when you're when you're casting and you're working a jig you know that's how i like to hold mine i like to have my my finger on the line so i get even more transmission um but i don't mind a high speed i'm not you know wrenching it out of heavy cover so i want to keep up with the fish and i want to get that fish in the boat this is a seven three a seven foot to seven three medium heavy fast action tip is where i like to be with this uh, as far as the line i tend to go I, I fish clear water you can go down as far as 12 pound fluorocarbon my sort of happy medium is 15 i use it more than anything and generally i will go up to 17 pound but if i'm fishing clear water and i'm not around a lot of wood a lot of times what i'm going to be flipping is uh that 12 to 15 15 being my go-to so now let's talk about where and how i like to fish these archie style or these skipping jigs guys during the fall places like this are perfect they are perfect you got a little bit of wood you've got kind of those flat rocks with a little bit of that you know gravel you know style smaller chunk rock mixed in and generally you know i'm going to make casts right up to the bank and i'm going to drag that jig back i'm going to keep my rod tip i'm going to reel down and I'm gonna keep my rod tip horizontal to the water and then I'm just going to lift up ever so slightly and reel back down. That's how I'm gonna work this jig 90% of the time. Now, you can give it a few hops. You know, you've seen me hop it over that wood right there. Now, one of the things that I'll do is think about a crawdad or a crayfish when it's scaring away so i'll reel up and i'll just barely i think i had a bite right there actually i'll just barely move that jig very little you know three to six inch little hops that's the second way i'll move it but 90 percent of the time during the fall i'm going to drag this bait across everything so the next bait I want to talk about is the walking bait. So the cigar style, stick bait, whatever you want to call it, any sort of walking bait. Now, just so happens this is the Head & Lures One Knocker or the Head & Lures Spook. So let's talk about rod, reel, and line setup for this particular bait. For me, guys, generally, I like to make long casts with it. But you'll see in some of it i like to make accurate casts also so i like a good seven foot rod i can get distance and i can get accuracy when i need it generally i put it on mono you can fish it on uh, you can fish it on braid if you like if your water is a little dirtier for me i fish a lot of clear water so i'm going to use a lot of translucent baits and i'm going to fish it on monofilament low vis green and generally it's going to be about 15 pound test now i like anywhere from a 6 8 to 7 0 to 1 reel or 7 1 to 1 reel it doesn't I, I just don't overpower it and move the bait with the reel handle that's the key when you're walking these baits don't move the bait with the reel handle all the action is imparted with the rod tip so that's about as fast as I like to go. As far as the rod goes, I like a medium fast action. Throwing the bigger walking baits, that medium fast needs to be a little bit more on the stiff side. So, you know, each brand, each make in a lot of brands will have a little different action. Now, if I'm throwing the lighter baits, I like a medium, maybe a moderate action or a medium fast action that's got just a little more tip to it. So it's just one of those things when it comes to rods, you really gotta kinda get it out there and see which one works best for whatever size walking bait you're throwing. Now, let's talk about retrieves. 
So guys, it really depends on the location and the depth and the water clarity. That is what I really base my retrieves on. So one of the locations that I like to fish, I'll kind of give you a heads up, is over some deep ledges. Early fall, those bass will begin to group up and they love places. I've got a road bed right here. I've got a creek channel that runs out to about 40 foot. I've got that road bed, which is sitting in about 25 feet, and then it comes up on the bank. And this is a great place for them to push shad up against that road bed and that bank and feed on top water. Now, when I'm out in a place like this and I'm over deeper water, I want to make the longest cast that I could possibly make. So I, I set it out there. I kind of fish it like a popper. I let the rings kind of dissipate. I reel up my slack, but again, I'm sure, I'm, I make sure that I'm not moving that bait. And I work it very slowly and deliberately. I let the bait get all the way to its apex on one side and then bring it back to the other, all the way on the apex apex of the other side as I'm working it. And the reason why I work it slow over deep water is because if you work it fast, a lot of times, unless they're just super aggressive, a lot of times if they're down and they're over 20, 30 foot of water and they're in 20, 15 to 25 foot deep, if you work that bait over their head too fast, they just see it going. What I'm doing is working it nice and slow, like a dying bait fish on the water surface, and it gives them time to swim up. And when that thing just goes, they just can't stand it. As soon as it makes that move back, so it's got that slow down at the apex, and then bam, right back. It kills them, they can't take it. The other basic retrieve is hard and fast. One of the things I like to do when I'm fishing up to shallow water is it gets out there and guys, that bait for me, I am trucking it back. Now I may once in a while put a stop in it, but it's gonna be a very short pause. I love to do this when I'm around smallmouth. I love to do this when I'm around spots or when I'm around fish that are just insane, insane active. And I mean, I am working this bait as fast as I can possibly work it. It just drives them nuts. It's a reaction bite 110%. Now, let's talk a little more about the locations. All right, so early fall, before they really start pushing those shad back up into the backs of those creeks, this is again, I've already talked about it, one of my favorite places to catch them on the top water. You've got deep water, you've got a ledge, they're stacking up here, getting ready to start that migration. Like I said, you've got a channel ledge, a deep road bed, it's just set up too perfect for them not to corral the shad. So some of the other places I like to fish this bait is main lake points during the early fall and those secondary points as they gradually work their way back. All right, last but not least, when it comes to the walking bait, guys, as you're going back into those pockets, uh, those creeks, make sure you don't neglect these laydowns. The laydowns can be deadly. All right, I'm gonna put this as number one on the list when it comes to fall and it's an underspin. Guys, this thing is so versatile. You can fish it so many different ways. It is incredible. Now, I like to fish the underspin in a lot of different places in a lot of different ways. But during the fall, I love to target fish that are targeting bait fish. So even if I'm from deep to shallow, generally, this is gonna be the setup that I'm gonna use. So let's start with the rod. I like a seven to a seven foot three medium fast action rod. That gives me both the distance that I want when they're out on the ledges, pushing them up in deeper water when they first start schooling up, 
during the fall before they really start the migration to the backs of the pockets and the backs of the creeks. It also gives me the accuracy that I need when I need to start targeting those secondary points and maybe some wood when I'm fishing this over top, kind of target fishing. I'll show you that as we go. The line, generally I'm fishing 12 pound. You can go up to 15, especially if you're fishing for some larger than average fish. But generally on this, I'm throwing 12 pound test fluoro. As far as the reel goes, again, this is my lose. I love this reel. This is the BB1 Pro and it is a 6.5. I like a 6.3 to 6.5, a little bit slower so that you can move this bait nice and slow. That's the key. Get it down below those bait fish when they're schooled up and come right along the bottom. You're gonna catch those bigger than average bass. Working it down, you know, the bank line, you can work that six five to one just a touch faster to keep it out of any sort of snags or hang ups. Right, so the retrieve with these things are super simple. I do two things with it, but I do this more, it has more to do with the depth level of the shad and the bass than it has to do with the retrieve. The very first thing I do is I, I send it out there, I sink it to the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom, I'm making sure I'm keeping my slack semi reeled up. And what I do is I give it two or three quick turns of the reel and then it is super slow. Guys, if you think you're going slow, slow down. And then if you think you're going slow then, slow down even more. I mean, if you look at my rod or my reel, I am moving this bait painfully slow. Now, the other thing that I do is I'll cast it out. If I see the shad, let's say they're over 30 foot of water, but they're in 20 foot of water, I'll make a cast out there and I'll count it down to where I think the bottom of that shad is. And then I'll immediately start turning the reel handle. And again, I'll keep it at a nice, slow pace so that I'm keeping it in that strike zone, in that, at that depth level in the water column. So now let's talk about location. Again, early in the fall, perfect sort of area, got a road bed, got a creek channel. So we've got a ledge. We've got a hard spot here where these bass can corral these fish up, these bait fish up and commence their fall feed. One of the other places that I like to throw this underspin is on points. Main lake points during the early fall, the key is shad. That's the thing that you're concentrating on. If I go by this point and there's no shad, I'm not stopping. As the year goes on or as the fall goes on and they move farther back into the creeks, I'm throwing this on secondary points deeper into the creeks. Last, and you guys seen me actually do this in one of the last uh, on the water videos, is a place like this. This is a, a short pocket off the main lake and they will push those shad up in this short pocket and they will just blast them. So this, when it comes to the underspin, is one of my favorite places to throw it. Guys, make sure you get out there. The fall can be some good fishing, but it can also be really tough. So don't beat yourself up when you're out there junk fishing, trying to figure them out. A lot of times during the fall, I've got a ton of rods and reels on my deck. I want to give a big shout out to my two YouTube bros. Mr. Tackle Junkie 81 and Mr. Devo's Fishing. Guys, make sure you go check them out. They both do some unique things, some things that I'm a huge fan of, and I think you will be too. So as always, I hope this helps you guys catch some more bass during the fall. Leave those questions and comments in the comment section below. I'm sure Debo and Tackle Junkie will probably keep an eye on the comments a little bit. And if you've got any questions for them, I'll uh, keep them informed that 
you guys are asking for them. Make sure you go to their channel, like, subscribe, do whatever it is you do, ring their bells, but make sure you leave them a comment on some of their videos that you heard about them through me. Now, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. And you guys rock.